good to have you here. Uh, we're upstairs in our loft area, uh, cool. and we the the books behind us aren't actually books; they're a fake poster. <laughs> but, uh, this is the third week of our uh, controversial conversations, and um, and when I thought of this subject, uh, it's because I read a book. Uh, Walter Brueggemann has a book called uh, Sabbath as Resistance, mm -hmm. and I remember I was listening to this several months ago. I was in the garage. And uh, this is a radical book. Uh, the, th the two things that struck me is, number one, he's presenting a view of what it means to be one of God's covenant people that uh, actually uh, is contradictory to much of my current life. And I, as I listened to it, I kind of uh, actually thought, I wonder if I've missed some very basic stuff of salvation. <laughs> because I don't feel like I am living the Sabbath life uh, as the Old Testament, because he did a good job of, he quoted a, ton of scripture. I recommend the book. But what struck me is that uh, this is pre presenting a God that I uh, don't feel like I'm following very much. And I, I had this odd sensation, I haven't had it for a while, that uh, I don't understand what it means to be one of God's people. And this is a pretty radical uh, approach toward that. Yes. And then I thought, well, this needs to be one of our controversial conversations. And then I thought, who's another, another workaholic like me? <laughs> and me! Yeah. <laughs> I'm in. We, have, we share this common struggle of uh, feeling like we have to be producing all the time, mm -hmm. it's hard to relax. And I only know mm -hmm. that because we've talked. And So why is it so hard to rest? Why why do we feel compelled to go, go, go? Maybe. It's cultural. And it's, um, by the way, it's demonic. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it is. And what I mean by that, I, I'm not like, ooh, ooh, ooh everything's demonic. Right. But it came from the very beginning of our culture. There is a very important notion of um, doing excellently at everything you are called to do. And if you're called to make a living, then um, whatever it is that you do, you do your work heartily as unto the Lord. And um, th so we, we had this ethic in this society that I think is very good, but it was corrupted. Now, the other thing that, in terms of a lie, is that it's what's more important to the human being are things and acquiring things which keep you engaged in something that you might enjoy, um, answers to your lust problems because everything is put out in front of us, meaning material things. Uh, are put in front of us, yeah. and we we want them. Yeah, lust for stuff, not, stuff, not just not just a sexual thing, but that's right, like a, a a a corrupted desire for more, 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 more. I want the world, and I want it. I now. want more, yeah. and and the core of this is that the society, the world around us, which is corrupted, um, is constantly putting pressure on us to do more. I'm trying to get at why it is that you and I, when we sit still, often feel like we have to do something. Well, yeah, I, I understand. So that that's a, I think that that is the right question. Um, and Because uh, I didn't grow up in poverty, but I grew up with an ethic that you're you're not worth anything unless you're doing you're something. You're doing something, you're creating something. Yeah, and if you're not being productive, then, then you better, it's more like a, not an issue of survival, uh, physically, but maybe emotional survival. Absolutely. You're, you're not okay unless you are producing, being productive. And if you're not being productive, then you're lazy Yep. and uh, yep. and you're bad. There's like a shame. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> now that's my, that's my, I have the same ethic. So we're the same. On we that. have the same on, we, and we were raised well in it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you know. Because uh, they were raised well in it. Well, yeah. So um, he was a great example to me. But he also thoroughly thrashed me um, for not being a good student because I was the worst student. And um, you were a poor student. Oh yeah, I, I <laughs> my my average in high school was one point eight. <laughs> so and your dad's system didn't help you; uh, it hindered you. And and the ideal that he laid down, yeah. which is you must work hard, it was radical. I mean, he didn't talk to me for a month wow. when I got he got my report card once. And um, I was I was in journalism school. I had a had a project which was in covering an election, and I just couldn't write the darn thing. And I, the, you know, my my paper, and and I was struggled, 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 and then um, then the Lord 
I prayed, Lord, show me what you want me to do, to do. And he did. And he told me, I want you to go do mechanical engineering. Wow. And I quit four weeks before the end of the semester. So you're in college, and I remember your story. You're a, you're yeah. a new Christian at this time, right? I'm a new Christian. Yeah. And I go, I... So God takes you from journalism into mechanical in, engineering. Into, now, and I grabbed a friend of mine at the library I was working, had a book on teaching you algebra. I went, I worked that whole book in four weeks. Went to a trig class <laughs> in, in, in the College of Engineering and aced the class. Wow. And the rest, I, I graduated with special honors, you know, three point eight three average. I rarely got anything but an A. But do you feel like God like unlocked what was in your brain, or do you feel like He gave you something? I I have to think oh. that it was there the whole time. Yeah, but, it was there the whole time. And but some, for some reason, it wasn't accessible. It was part of it was part of the miracle of what God was doing inside of you. Yes, and, and it just just came alive. And it turns out I am a mathematician. I I've got. A, minor in mathematics in my graduate for my graduate degree and so i i love mathematics and i used it and i just didn't know i yeah. just didn't and then the love for it didn't come until i'd spent an inordinate amount of time <laughs> solving problems you know and then physics and and all of that that physics and solving problems was an absolute joy i wow i loved that doing that it's nice and, if you have oh, a no if you idea. love what you do yeah and it's hard if you don't and uh yeah my my dad wanted me to be an engineer oh and uh, my older brother uh my perfect older brother Pete, <laughs> your perfect who I older. still hate the fact that i hated him for so long oh i did because i didn't measure up speaking of uh, yeah me too my older brother was that way too okay he was in it he was very smart he was one of those didn't have to study he'd just go listen yes. and he had it you know yeah pete was straight a's uh chemi yeah. chemical engineering and wow. my, my dad's like you should be an engineer and i'm and I'm like, but I like uh, liberal arts, Dad. And it's just like... <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter with you?